How's it going, everybody? Chaotic Meatball here, and welcome back to the channel. So, for the first time ever on this channel, it's time to take on a pretty highly requested challenge, and that's a Professor Oak's challenge in a ROM hack, particularly in Pokemon Emerald Kaizo. This game has been very popular in the challenge community, with several of the other people in this uh, community doing several really cool videos, like Chizzy and Teon, and even Zwigo, so there's quite a few YouTubers out here doing challenges in this game. Heck, I did a grass-only challenge a few months back, and it's really popped off, so I figured I'd want to take it on my specialty. Since ROM hacks aren't usually done in this sort of challenge, there aren't very many guides, usually only a single one on just a few hacks located in the Professor Oak Challenge Discord server. Link in the description, by the way. We are almost at 2,000 members, so I would really appreciate it if we're going to be able to get up to that point. So I had to write out a spreadsheet with the areas that I could find each Pokemon, as well as using a few other general guides written out there, such as for puzzles, encounter rates, and evolution level changes, all of which will be linked in the description for your use in case you want to try this challenge. Also, before we begin, I'd like to remind you guys to subscribe, since we're so close to 50,000, and for three-fourths of my viewers aren't subscribed, so I'd really appreciate it. Lastly, if you'd like to see other ROM hacks, leave a comment down below for what you'd want to see next. Anyway, let's get into the rules. Rule 1, you must capture and evolve every Pokemon possible before obtaining every gym badge. This means hunting for everything and evolving them, no matter how high the level of evolution they may be. This ROM hack changes things like trade and happiness evolutions to certain stones and levels, so we'll get to those as we go along. Rule 2, no interaction with other games. This is pretty easy because it's a ROM hack and can't trade properly, and the fact that all 386 Pokemon are available in the game, it's kind of pointless. And rule 3, no glitches. Let's get down to business then. So, we actually have two very important things to do here at the beginning. The first of which is setting the time correctly so that Shoal Cave later on will be at low tide. This lets us get a few Pokemon that we wouldn't be able to get with high tide, so it's very important. Secondly is our starter choice. This is because Mudkip, Trico, and Torchic are all available at later points in the game, but Mudkip is available the latest, so for this challenge's sake, we'll need to choose Mudkip. Good thing, since I don't want to choose anything else. So, one of the biggest things about this ROM hack is that each area has a massive amount of Pokemon in each one, sometimes up to 10 new Pokemons because of how all 386 Pokemon, as of Generation 3, are available. So after taking out May, I'm able to get Pokeballs, making them available in Old Ale Town. And the best thing about this hack is that Pokeballs are only 10 Poke Dollars rather than the 200 they cost normally, which makes it easy enough for me to buy around 80 balls and bundles of 10 so that I can get some Premier Balls as a bonus. So it's time to catch some Pokemon! Route 101 is our first location where I can get Pidgey, Wormpole, Rattata, and Caterpie to start out. And this is where I had a pretty big thought, that being, you know what, there's hundreds of ROM hacks out there. How am I supposed to cover them all when a lot of their gimmicks are either being super hard or having almost or all of the Pokemon available? And that led me to decide to set the game to a 3 times speed to make it not super super crazy. Otherwise, how else am I going to finish these in a timely fashion? I tend not to use speed up when it comes to the main series games since I want to try for the lowest in-game time. But with these, I figure I can sacrifice the ability to use inputs as soon as possible for saving two-thirds of the time I use normally. Especially in the post-game. We will get to that. Anyway, I hope that's alright with you guys, since I still gotta be conscious of my upload schedule. Anyway, getting back to the catches, I went ahead and captured Togepi, Pochiana, Sentret, Iglybuff, and Zigzagoon before evolving my Wormpole into Cascoon at level 7. Both cocoons can be caught in Petalburg Woods, so I'll be on the lookout for Silcoon when we get there. Continuing with Route 101 encounters, I finished up with Weedle, Cleffa, evolving Cascoon into Dustox at level 10, before finally finding Pichu. Both Cleffa and Pichu are actually 1% encounters, so it took nearly two hours of in-game time before I could get out of the first route. I am definitely in for the long haul, but with all of those in the bag, I'm able to go up slightly to Route 103, which has just as many encounters, those being Sunkern, who actually automatically holds a Sunstone in this ROM hack, so I'll need to catch a few of them so that I can evolve not just Sunkern later on, but a few other things as well. This is also found with Moon and Fire Stones here in this section, so I'll be on the lookout for those. After getting those Sunstones, I caught Wingle, 
pop it in Ekans before grabbing all three sunstones I need from those sun currents. Getting back to encounters, we've got Marie, Spiro, Spoink, and there we go, Skitty. Skitty has a very big chance of holding Moonstones, which we'll need a whopping five of for this section. All right, again, back to encounters, those being Poliwag, Lediba, Talo, evolving Pidgey into Pidgeotto at level 16 rather than the normal 18, since this game has a few changes in the evolution level, some of which are insanely frustrating, but we will get to those, believe me. Lastly, Apom is another one of those 1% encounters, so I got that along with five of the Moonstones in the meanwhile. I figured I may as well evolve the stone evolutions I have now before moving on, getting Skitty into Delcaddy with the Moonstone, as well as Sunkern into Sunflora with the Sunstone. Surprised with how much we've gotten already? Well, that's not all, since the old rod has been moved from Duford over here to Route 103, so I'm able to get that and capture Remoraid and Tentacool here on Route 103, as well as Love Disc and Goldeen in Little Root Town. Oh yeah, another change. This game has also added some small patches of grass and water in certain towns that didn't have any before, such as in Old Ale Town where I'm able to find Numel, Growlithe, Ponyta, Slugma, who has a 100% chance of holding a Firestone in this hack, so we'll need to get a few of these, Vulpix, Magby, Cyndaquil, and Charmander. Of course, Growlithe evolved into Arcanine with the Firestone, as did Bullpix into Ninetales, so with those, it's Route 102 time, where I'm able to capture Ralts, Sandshrew, Electrike, Meowth, Farfetch'd, Spinarak, Nidoran Mail, Pikachu, Gulpin, Hoot Hoot, and Minin, yet another 1% encounter. It's quite a pain getting these, but since there's so many Pokemon to train, it's easy enough just to bring a pack of them along with me. Route 102 also has a few fishing encounters, those being Barboach and Carvana. Awesome, time to move on. This is the first route with some trainers, where I was able to evolve Goldeen into Sea King at level 20, before moving on to Petalburg City and getting the tutorial out of the way before catching the grass encounters here, those being Meryl, Krabby, Corfish, Psyduck, Two Slopo, Squirtle, Surskit, and Totodile. I didn't end up getting a second Slowpoke until I evolved Mareep into Flaffy at level 15, but with that I'm also able to grab Azura with the old rod before heading over to Route 104, where there's another slew of encounters. We're getting there, believe me, we're, we're, we're getting there. Wait, if I'm already getting tired now, the grind is gonna be insane. I'll better actually catch some stuff. Since on Route 104 there's the Nidoran female, Elekid, Natu, Jigglypuff, Snubble, Seedot, Cubone, Venonat, and Drowsy in the Grass, as well as Magikarp with Old Rod. With an evolution of Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff with a Moonstone, it's forest time and I decided to take out the Magma Grunt before going for the captures, getting Bellsprout, Two Oddish, Velbeat, Pineco, Pidiursa, Fanpy, Elamise, evolving Pidgeotto into Pidgeot at level 30, Mudkip into Marshomp at level 16, Silcoon, and literally after an hour of searching, real time, not in game time, I found both Slackoff and Mankey, finishing off the Petalburg Forest and leaving only four more areas to go. I took out the trainers on North Route 104 and headed right into Rustboro City, grabbing the HM for cut and taking out the trainers in the gym before going into the grass behind the gate that you normally pick up the X defense, letting me capture Roselia, Shroomish, Jikorita, evolving Meryl into Zumarill at level 18, Cacnea, Bulbasaur, Lotad, evolving Flaffy into Ampharos at level 30, Cyndaquil into Quilava at level 16, and after a bunch of searching, Execute. Yet another one of those friggin' 1% encounters. Breaking my balls here, game. Don't make it so hard. Well, the game decided to listen, since Route 115 only has two encounters right now, both of them being fishing encounters where I can get Kabuto and Ammonite. Guess this game takes place millions of years before regular Emerald, or else these wouldn't be here. Either that or I'm looking into it too much. Yep, definitely the latter. Anyway, Route 116 is our second to last area to capture Pokemon from. Those being Grimer, Harris, Yanma, Voltorb, Makihita, Kakuna, Chimeko, and Unknown, leaving just the Rust Turf Tunnel. There's a bunch of rock types in here, among some other things, those being Rhyhorn, Nosepass, Dunsparce, Geodude, 
Onyx, Swinub, Wismer, and Zubat, the final encounter of this action. So it's time for the massive grind of this action. The searching of these Pokemon already took me about 20 hours of in-game time, so let's just see how long it takes for me to finish the grinding. My basic strategy was to bring a few water and grass types as super effective damage dealers while being able to switch train the stuff that couldn't hit the rock types for very much, while also using their power points on the Pokemon outside, since although they're slightly lower level, with the Pokemon in the Rust Curve's tunnel being at a max of 12, but on Route 116 they're at a max of 9, but it still helps with the XP gain, leading to a whole slew of evolutions, many of which are actually different from the normal evolutions. Those being Cleffa into Clefairy with max happiness, and into Clefable with a Moonstone, Togepi into Togetic with ha max happiness, Caterpie into Metapod at level 7, and into Butterfree at level 10, Oddish into Gloom at level 16, and into Blossom with a Sunstone, Palava into Typhlosion at level 36, Squirtle into Wartortle at level 16, Psyduck into Golduck at level 25, Marshtomp into Swampert at level 36, Totodile into Croconaw at level 16, Corfish into Crawdont at level 25, Remoraid into Octillery at level 25, Kakuna into Beedrill at level 10, Silcoon into Beautifly at level 10, C Dot into Nuzleaf at level 14, Croconaw into Feraligator at level 30, Lediba into Ledian at level 18, Sentret into Furret at level 15, Lotad into Lombre at level 14, Poliwag into Poliwhirl at level 25, Slowpoke into Slowbro at level 37, Wartortle into Blastoise at level 36, Nidoran Male into Nidorino at level 16 and into Nidoking with a Moonstone, Nidoran Female into Nidorina at level 16 and into Nidoqueen with a Moonstone, Bulbasaur into Ivysaur at level 16, Chikorita into Bayleaf at level 16, Pochiana into Mightyana at level 18, Poliwhirl into Politoed at level 37, Ivysaur into Venusaur at level 32, Bellsprout into Weepin Bell at level 16, Krabby into Kingler at level 28, Slugma into Macargo at level 16, Zigzagoon into Linoon at level 20, Rattata into Raticate at level 20, Carvana into Sharpedo at level 30, Bayleaf into Meganium at level 32, Wingull into Pelipper at level 25, Spiro into Firo at level 20, Slackoth into Vigoroth at level 18, Ammonite into Amistar at level 40, Hopip into Skiploom at level 18, Ekans into Arbok at level 22, Skiploom into Jumpluff at level 27, Surskit into Masquerine at level 22, Kabuto into Kabutops at level 40, Vigoroth into Slacking at level 36, Magikarp into Gyarados at level 20, Mankey into Primeape at level 28, Pineco into Fortress at level 31, Voltorb into Electrode at level 30, Barboach into Whizcash at level 30, Teddy Ursa into Ursaring at level 30, Shroomish into Breloom at level 23, Geodude into Graveler at level 25, Tentacool into Tentacruel at level 30, Graveler into Golem at level 42, Elekid into Electabuzz at level 30, Natu into Zatu at level 25, Kecnia into Cacturn at level 29, Charmander into Charmeleon at level 16, Wismer into Loudred at level 20, Paris into Parasect at level 24, Makihita into Hariyama at level 24, Fampi into Donphan at level 25, Loudred into Exploud at level 36, Talo into Swellow at level 22, Snubble into Gramble at level 23, Drowsy into Hypno at level 38, Charmeleon into Charizard at level 36, Hoot Hoot into Noctowl at level 20, Ponyta into Rapidash at level 25, Spinarak into Ariados at level 22, Spoink into Grumpig at level 27, Sandshrew into Sandslash at level 22, Meowth into Persian at level 28, Electric into Manectric at level 26, Golpin into Swalla at level 26, 
Magby into Magmar at level 30. Numel into Camerupt at level 33. Onyx into Steelix at level 45. Cubone into Marowak at level 28. Zubat into Golbat at level 22. And into Crobat one level later with max happiness. Ralts into Curlia at level 20. Rhyhorn into Rhydon at level 42. Curlia into Gardevoir at level 30. Venonat into Venomoth at level 31. Swinub into Piloswine at level 33. And Grimer into Muck at level 38. Whew! <sighs> that was a lot. Usually that ends up being in the post game, but this one is quite a doozy. And with that, with a total of 212 Pokemon and a time of 82 hours and 13 minutes, it's time to fight Roxanne. I swept her easily with my Steelix since it was my highest level Pokemon, destroying her and allowing me to move on to the next section. Alright, so the rest of the sections of the game definitely are a bit easier, but there are still a ton of high level evolutions from here on out to deal with. After taking care of the Aqua Grunt in the Rust Curve Tunnel and moving on over to Dewford Town, I'm able to capture three Tie Rogues and a Machop before taking out the trainers inside of the gym, as well as the trainers slightly north of the town. I figured it'd be wise to train up Machop to a decently high enough level so that I can get rid of Steelix out of my party as fast as possible. After taking all of them out, I'm able to continue looking in the grass in Dewford, evolving Machop into Machoke at level 28, before finally finding Metatite, moving on to the fishing encounters afterwards. I'm actually able to step over to Route 107 just slightly to the right of Dewford Town, which allows me to fish for two Clam Pearls. I won't be able to get to Gorobis until I get a Water Stone, but Huntail is a level up evolution in this version, so we'll be getting that soon. Dewford Town also has a few fishing encounters as well, those being Sfeel and Shelter, whereas Seal is on Route 106, leaving just the Granite Cave. Spinda, Aron, and Mawile are all available on the first floor, but on the first basement floor, I'm able to capture Delibird, Sneasel, Smoochum, evolving Tyrogue into Hitmonlee at level 15 with higher attack than defense, then getting Snowrun, finishing off the encounters for the section. It's time for grinding again, and in this section, there's a decent selection of Pokemon to grind against. Both the Pokemon in Dewford and in Granite Cave are of equal level, but the ones in Granite Cave have a slightly higher EXP yield, though at the same time it's quite frustrating to get encounters to spawn. Wish I had Sweet Scent already, but we'll have to wait until the next section to get a hold of that. Anyway, the evolutions didn't take too too long, though having several Pokemon with evolutions higher than level 40 did make it a little bit tedious, but I pulled it off, evolving Tyrogue into Hitmonchan at level 15 with higher defense than attack, Tyrogue into Hitmontop at level 15 with equal attack and defense, Clam Pearl into Huntail at level 24, Sfeel into Celio at level 25, Aron into Lairon at level 25, Smoochum into Jinx at level 30, Sfeel into Dugong at level 28, Meditite into Medicham at level 37, Celio into Walrein at level 44, Laron into Agron at level 42, Snowrun into Glalie also at level 42, and finally Machoke into Machamp at level 50. God, I hate that high level, level evolutions. This is why Pokemon like Volcarona and Hydreigon are such a total pain in the ass to get in later titles. Either way, I finished the section with a total of 240 Pokemon and a time of 95 hours and 42 minutes, taking on Brawly. Now you may ask, why would you take on Brawly? Can't you deliver the letter to Steven and be on your way? Well, no, this is because some random Rock Smash Rock is blocking the way to Steven, and beating Brawly somehow removes it from the path. I don't know how, but Sinister Hooded Figure made an event in the game happen that doesn't even occur in the normal version. Very impressive. So now that I have the Knuckle Badge in hand, I'm able to head into Steven's room in the Granite Cave and capture both a Magnemite and Abra before talking to him and giving him the letter. Now I could go back and get the experience share, but I forgot about it. Yeah, my bad, I'll be getting it in a section or two. With those two in tow though, I'm able to get through the gauntlet of trainers on Route 109, arriving in Slateport City rather quickly. I can't quite get the encounter here yet, and this is because on Route 1010, I can find a Pokemon with Sweet Scent, which makes finding encounters much faster. Here I can find Murkrow, Lickitung, Evolving Abra into Kadabra at level 16, Kecleon, and the Sweet Center himself, Tropius. 
This makes it very easy for me to find a Plusle over in Slateport City, which is a 1% encounter. I hate it. I hate these things. Kill me. Anyway, I'm able to head back to Route 110 and use the old rod to catch a Quillfish before destroying my rival and getting to Mauville City. Clearly this game is having an effect on my mental state. Anyway, again, there's only one encounter here as well, that being Porygon, who thank the lord is a 10% encounter. This leaves just one fishing encounter on Route 118, that being Chincho. This is because I can get the good rod here instead of waiting until I have Surf. Awesome, now it's time for grinding again. This is a pretty short grind since there's only four Pokemon to evolve, and Route 117 is a great place to train, as there's plenty of fully evolved bug types, letting me quickly evolve Magnemite into Magneton at level 30, and Chinchu into Lantern at level 27. The other two weren't so quick, since Porygon barely has any good attacking moves, and Kadabra evolves at level frickin' 55. Of course, this nets me Porygon into Porygon 2 at level 42, and Kadabra into Alakazam at level 55. But it took around 8 hours to get them both fully evolved, having a total of 255 Pokemon, and a time of 104 hours and 40 minutes. Watson's easily thrown down, stepped on, and left bleeding with the Dynamo badge wrestled from his grasp, allowing me to move on to the next section. So this section has a lot of Pokemon compared to everything aside from the first section, but the majority of them are actually done very easily, so let's get into it. With the Dynamo badge in tow, I'm able to use Rock Smash to head up to Route 112, where I'm able to capture an Absol before heading into the Fiery Path. The majority of the wild Pokemon for the section are in this area, those being Torkoal, a female Flareon, and Coughing. So you know what that means. I went back over to Route 117 to grab my male Raticate to breed with my Flareon, getting myself 4 eggs to get 4 Eevees. I'll be evolving all of them later on in this section, but I'll get to them soon enough. Route 113 is one of the first areas that doesn't have any new Pokemon, so I just moved on over to Falarbor Town, which is where I'll be getting the majority of my new Pokemon. This is because I can buy every evolution stone here, so I grabbed a Moonstone, 4 Leaf Stones, 6 Water Stones, and 2 Thunder Stones before heading into the Pokemon Center and evolving Pikachu into Raichu with the Thunderstone, Eevee into Jolteon with the Thunderstone, Eevee into Vaporeon with a Water Stone, Eevee into Umbreon with a Moonstone, Eevee into Espeon with a Sunstone, Clam Pearl into Gorobis with a Water Stone, Slowpoke into Slowking with a Water Stone, Shelter into Cloister with a Water Stone, Lombre into Ludicolo with a Water Stone, Nuzleaf into Shiftry with a Leaf Stone, Weepin' Bell into Victory Bell with a Leaf Stone, and Execute into Executor with a Leaf Stone. I still have a single Leaf Stone and a Water Stone laying around, and that's because I need to get Bioplume and Polyrath. Gloom luckily is catchable on Route 113, so I'm able to evolve Coughing into Weezing at level 35 before grabbing the Gloom quickly to evolve into Vileplume with the Leaf Stone. But that, I needed to grab a Pokemon to grind while searching for other encounters in Falarbor. So I went to Route 114, so finding Seviper and Swablu before going back to Falarbor Town to search for certain Pokemon. Those being Sudowoodo and Stantler before evolving Swablu into Altaria at level 35. With that, I'm out of stuff to grind again, so it's time to get Poliwrath. I forgot to grab two Poliwags all the way back in Section 1, so I had to go all the way back to Petalburg City to catch another one and train it up to Poliwhirl to evolve it. That was easily done thanks to going through the entirety of Cycling Road, as well as grinding on encounters on Route 114 to find a Zangoose. But I didn't find one before it managed to evolve into Poliwhirl at level 25, so I just gave it the Water Stone to evolve into Poliwrath and kept looking finally finding a Zangoose before running through the Magma Grunts and arriving in Meteor Falls. The only two new Pokemon here are Solrock and Lunatone, which of course don't need to be evolved, so I'm still out of something to grind. I'm actually out until I'm done with Mount Chimney, where I can clear out Team Magma and get to the Jagged Pass, where I can capture Doduo, evolving its trait into Dodrio after one level thanks to the required trainers on the path. Alright, one more Pokemon to go, and that's Why Not, which is found in Lava Ridge Town. There's the egg here that you also find in Vanilla Emerald, but this Why Not is sent from the devil! You wanna know how high a level Why Not means to be to evolve? Level 64! With only Counter and Mirror Coat! Freaking kill me! I hate this goddamn ROM hack. It's game is gonna kill me, I'm never gonna do another goddamn Professor Oak challenge again. 
<sighs> this grind was long, it was arduous, it took a crap ton to switch training with Alagazam through both the gym trainers and the wild Pokemon in Jagged Pass. But after around, oh, I don't know, 15 hours, I evolved Why Not into Wobbuffet at level 64, finishing the section with 287 Pokemon and a time of 122 hours and 21 minutes. Okay, 99 more Pokemon to go. So this next section is really short compared to the rest of what we've handled so far. This is pretty normal for Hoenn, since the next gym is all the way back in Petalburg, but I did get the Go Goggles from May after exiting the gym. This gives me access to Route 111, and with that, the Mirage Tower. Mirage Tower actually has every new encounter for this action, consisting of Diglett, Trapinch, and Baltoy on Floor 1, Dugdrio, Ligar, and Claydol on Floor 2, and Bagon on Floor 4, leaving just the fossils. I actually find Anorith to be the easiest to train up, and since we can get Lilip and Cray Dilly much later, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But that, that's literally all of the encounters. This just leaves Trapinch, Anorith, and Bagon to evolve. Trapinch took the least amount of work, only taking 6 levels to evolve into Vibrava, and then into Flygon. Anorith and Bagon didn't take too long either, only taking about 3 hours to grind on Route 111, getting Bagon to Shogun at level 30, Anorith into Armaldo at level 40, and Shogun into Salamence at level 50. Back to the gym we go, and it's time to take on Norman with a total of exactly 300 Pokemon, and a time of 126 hours and 58 minutes. Not gonna lie, this fight actually took a few attempts since it's a double battle and I kept getting my butt whooped, but thanks to Alakazam, Machamp, and Salamence, I was able to make it through and win, moving on to the next section. So with Surf and Toe, I can go around the region and grab a few new encounters that weren't available previously. The first of which is Mantine over on Route 1 of 3 while surfing, hitting two Shadow Balls and capturing it with a Pokeball with no problems. Next up on my list is Relicanth, which I can find by using Good Rod over on Route 105. With that caught, it's only hop and skip over to Dewford Town where I can find Corsola by surfing, or using Sweet Sense while staying in place, which I guess isn't technically surfing, but you get the point. Two more encounters in prior locations left, the first of which is Beldum on Route 115. I initially caught one at level 19, but I checked around and sure enough, there's Beldums at higher levels. So I grabbed one at level 43 and moved on to searching for the second encounter here, that being Kangaskhan, catching it in a Premier Ball. Since Beldum is literally two levels away from fully evolving, it was very easy to just fight the trainers on Route 119 to evolve Beldum into Matang and into Metagross at level 45. With those out of the way though, it's encounter time yet again. Route 119 has some pretty neat encounters like Scyther, Tangela, and Pinsir, but that's not it. This grass has a ton of lucky eggs laying around, which is going to be a great thing to get a boatload of extra EXP, but honestly, they're not all too useful since by this point, you're extremely likely to either have a Pokemon either at level 100 or very close like my Alakazam. So it's a lot better to just slap a lucky egg on that high level Pokemon and use the EXP share to let the training Pokemon get most of the EXP. It's weird, since I don't think it's 100% of the EXP you normally gain when it's at level 100, it seemed like it was around 75%, but that's more than enough for me to not have to deal with the hassle of switching and dealing with high level encounters. Right before arriving in the Weather Institute, Scyther hit level 50 and evolved into Scizor, leaving me to just get through the Institute itself. Beating all the trainers in here of course gets me the regular gift cast form, but this place will be useful in the post game as it is in regular Emerald. After taking out May and getting Fly, I'm able to hit up Fortree City and do absolutely nothing since there's no new encounters. In fact, there's nothing up until Mount Pyre, where I can capture Ghastly, Shuppet, Mr. Mime, and Mistrevis on the first floor. But that's it, since for some reason, Duskull isn't here, it's in the Cave of Origin. Oh well, still really weird to leave out a signature Pokemon that's normally associated with Malpire, but I digress. Before hitting the top, I'm able to evolve Shuppet into Bayonet at level 37, Ghastly into Haunter in one level, and into Gengar at level 50. And at the top, I'm given the Magma Emblem, so it's time to throw down with Maxi. He beats my bum several, several times, but I fluke my way into a victory, giving me access to one more encounter for the section, that being Combuskin. Getting out of there and breeding it gives me an egg that hatches into Torchic, and after taking out the trainers in the Fortree Gym, Combuskin evolves into Blaziken at level 36, 
finishing the section off with a total of 322 Pokemon and a time of 136 hours and 18 minutes. With that, I'm able to take on Winona and take her badge. But now you might be wondering, wait a second, why are you fighting Winona? Can't you just go ahead and go into Lily Cove City to continue the story? Actually, no, since there are Aqua Grunts that are blocking the city. But since you can step into the city technically before talking to them, causing it to be a flyable location. So I needed to get the badge for fly so I can get into Lily Cove to continue on. It's a strange way of blocking the way to a new city. I've never seen it used before, but hey, I can appreciate new ideas. So, I can't get any new Pokemon until I take out the Aqua Hideout. So, after ripping through them with my level 100 Alakazam, I went straight into Moss Deep City to grab the Super Rod. With this, I'm able to go ahead and fish up Whalmer on Route 133 right past Pacific Log Town. This at least makes Pacific Log a pliable location, and I can get Staryu while surfing on the same route. This is why I kept the extra Water Stone on, since I can evolve Staryu into Starmie with it. Just over on Route 134 are Seedra and Horsey while surfing, and over on Route 129 to the far east of Pacific Log, I can capture Great Dilly through fishing. I made sure to get a both male and female, since it's breedable, hatching myself a Lilip before taking out the trainers in the Moss Deep Gym, leveling up Whalmer before going to Shoal Cave just north of Moss Deep. Since I set the time on this quote-unquote Rye version of the game, the clock hasn't moved and we're singing at low tide, allowing me to access the Ice Room and capture Lapras. Alright, with that, there's only one new area, and that is the Safari Zone. But there's a lot of new Pokemon for me to grab. Area 1 is home of Girafferig, and Area 2 has Miltaik in the grass, as well as Milotic in the water while fishing with Super Rock. I grabbed both a male and female, since I'll need to breed them later on. And since I have the Acro Bike right now, I'm able to head to Area 4 to grab Grovile, Tauros, Heracross, and Trico before heading back to Mauville, switching my bike for the Mach Bike, breeding Milotic and Hatchika Feebass, and heading right back to the Safari Zone so I can get to Area 3, housing Snorlax in the grass, and Wooper in the water with the good rod. Alright, training time! I used the water just south of Moss Deep City to train, and with a both level 55 and whopping level 70 evolution, I figured it was a good choice. With this, I was able to evolve Wooper into Quagsire at level 20, Grovile into Sceptile at level 36, Seedra into Kingdra at level 55, and Whalmer into Waylord at level 40, but level 70. Da yeah, that was absolutely atrocious. This game really has some harsh grinds, but with a total of 344 Pokemon and a time of 146 hours and 13 minutes, I'm able to push through Tate and Liza with my high-level Pokemon. And despite most of them being under level 70, I managed to keep them down, getting the 7th badge and leading to the culmination of the story. With that, I've got to throw Team Magma out of the Moss Deep Space Center, destroying both Tabitha and Maxi, and opening up the Seafloor Cavern. While there aren't any new Pokemon here, Archie is here, and I'm able to whip him in the next week, causing a boatload of weather oddities. So I went to Sivtopolis and headed into the Cave of Origin to meet with Wallace. And oddly enough, this is the only new area with new Pokemon. On the second floor, I'm able to grab Houndour and Dusclops. Third floor's got Duskull, and the fourth floor has Aerodactyl and Houndoom, meaning I don't have to grind at all. This is actually great, since normally Houndour evolves at level 67 in this act, so I'm very, very happy I get to avoid that, since there's still two level 55 evolutions in the next section to handle. But with that, I'm able to retrieve Rayquaza to yell at the other two weather trio, giving me access to the Sutopolis Gym, where I have to take out both Wallace and Juan to win the Gym Badge with a total of 349 Pokemon and a time of 150 hours and 4 minutes. Jeez, 4 hours to do that level of progress? Well, there are quite a few required trainers and super hard bosses to get through, so it's fair enough. Anyway, pre elite 4 time. So this section has only 7 Pokemon, 2 pseudo-legendary lines, and a standalone. The two pseudos are in the back of Meteor Falls, only accessible now that I can use Waterfall outside of battle. Those being Dragonair while using the Super Rod, which I can make sure to grab two of so that I can breed for Dratini, as well as Pupitar as a regular encounter. I managed to get a female on my first encounter, and since it's part of the Monster Egg group, I'll be able to breed it with my male Snorlax. With those two in tow, I'm able to breed them to get Dratini and Larvitar, leaving just Route 123. This route is actually blocked off by Waterfall just as well, so with that, I'm able to run through the trainers, evolving both Pupitar into Tyranitar and Dragonair into Dragonite, 
getting to the end and capturing Skarmory to finish this action. One victory a road later and it's time to take on the Elite Four with a total of 356 Pokemon and a time of 154 hours and 15 minutes. The League sells $1 rare candies, so I'm able to just stock the heck out of myself just in case I need other level 100s in the post game, and I leveled up 6 of my strongest Pokemon that I have now, as well as getting Explosion for Executor so I can eek by Sydney, Phoebe, Glacia, Drake, and yes, screw you Drake for preventing me from winning my Monograss Emerald Kaizo Challenge, and Steven, yes, not Wallace, Steven, to beat the League and get to the post game. Oh lord. The post game. I may have said the same thing in the HGSS Oak Challenge when it comes to the post game, but this one, this one is a struggle. You know how I haven't caught a single legendary so far? Well, that's because they're all held off until the post game, even the Reggies as well as Verquaza. So straight off the bat, I'm given the SS ticket by my dad and chose Latios to be my roaming Pokemon for the game. Also, did I mention there's no Master Ball? It was replaced with a dive ball in the aqua hideout, so I'm sort of screwed when it comes to the roamer, but let's get into the few non-legendaries of this action. The two additional areas in the safari zone are now open, so I'm able to capture Smeargle, Chansey, and Shuckle in area 5, as well as Ninkata in area 6. I love how they don't give you access to Shedinja until the post game, since it could allow you to cheese anything that doesn't have a super effective attack for it. Sinister Hooded Figure really did think of everything when creating this. I trained for a few minutes on the outside of the Safari Zone to evolve Ninkata into Ninjask at level 20, and splitting off into Shedinja with a Pokeball in your inventory. No other ball, just Pokeball, for some reason. Crazily enough, Shedinja is actually used for an in-game trade over in Rustboro City, where I can trade it for a freaking Moltres. Yeah, the legendary birds are in-game trades for some reason, but I'll take it. With the fried chicken in my possession, I flew over to Falarber Town to go into the Ruined Maniac's Cave, otherwise known as the Desert Underpass, where I am able to capture both a Sableye and Ditto. I decided to keep Sableye around since it's already level 100 and has Mean Look and Confuse Ray, so it'll help immensely with keeping the legendaries from escaping. Now you may be wondering, legendaries? I thought you said there was only one roaming legendary. Why well, yes! But literally every other legendary catchable in this game has something like Teleport, Roar, Self-Destruct, Explosion, basically anything that makes it way, way too difficult to catch these things. In fact, there's one here in the Desert Underpass, and that's Mewtwo! You wanna know how long it took me to catch this thing? Three hours. Three hours of real time to catch a legendary Pokemon. Mostly because several Pokemon in here have Shadow Tag and are level 100 so you can't repel them away. So you're repeatedly getting beaten down on your way to Mewtwo so you have to heal before fighting it. It's quite a pain and then Mewtwo itself has both Teleport and Self-Destruct. Sadly, this is the case with every other Legendary in the game. So in respect of your time and not to mine, it took me 3 hours to catch Mewtwo, an hour and 15 to catch Entei inside of the Magma Hideout, then evolving Chansey into Blissey by spamming a bunch of rare candies purchased from the League so I could trade it for Zapdos over in Fortree City, and 15 minutes to catch Raikou, thank god. Raikou's actually in New Mauville, but after getting out of there, I'm able to go ahead and search for the event tickets, which have been made into obtainable items, such as the Mystic Ticket in Scorched Slab, Aurora Ticket in Altering Cave, Eon Ticket in Artisan Cave, and the old sea map from the abandoned ship. The Mystic Ticket was my first one used, allowing me to go to Naval Rock to capture Lugia and Ho-Oh within around two and a half hours combined. Jirachi is a gift Pokemon I can get in Moss Deep City, taking the place of the Beldum in Steven's house from Vanilla Emerald. Celebi's in the Safari Zone, which fortunately allows you to actually battle it instead of having to try to catch it with Safari Balls, taking around two hours because of the travel time between failed attempts, since you can't save inside of the Safari Zone. Mew is on Faraway Island, made easy since it can use Transform, giving it a higher catch rate and allowing me to catch it on my first attempt after putting it to sleep with Executor and damaging it with Pelipper. With that done, I headed over to the Battle Frontier, and I can't access the Artisan Cave until I get rid of the Sudowoodo block in the way. So I flew back to Rustboro so that I could go to Route 104 and grab the Whalmer Pail which actually is blocked off into the tail of the post game because they don't want you being able to grow berries. 
This game hates you. So I got rid of the Sudo Wudo and captured Suicune just outside of the cave on my fourth attempt, only taking around 20 minutes with a netball, since it has a higher chance of capture compared to the Ultra Ball since it's a water type. Altering Cave over on Route 103 gives me access to the ticket that gives me access to Birth Island, the home of Deoxys. Not gonna lie, this was my first time ever doing the puzzle to get Deoxys to appear, and I legitimately was dumbfounded as to why I kept doing the same thing over and over again and expecting it to work. I thought I was doing the least amount of steps, but once I figured it out, I realized I was kinda dumb, catching Deoxys within about an hour before moving onward. Southern Island's up next, the home of Latios, or Latios if you chose Latios to be your roamer, taking around an hour to catch just as well. Alright, we're getting there, just need the Regis, the Weather Trio, Latios, and Articuno. Articuno is a trade for Sableye, so we'll worry about that a little later, since Sableye is working pretty well for me right now. I decided it's time to work on getting to Rayquaza, since crazily enough, they actually block Rayquaza with a Dusclops on the overworld that will not let you pass until you clear the entire trick house on Route 110. I have a guide for the puzzles in the description, but there's also videos on Sinister Hooded Figures' YouTube channel that helped just as well. I stopped around halfway through since I was honestly getting bored, so it's time to go grab the Regis. They're unlocked the same way as Vanilla Emerald, but they were blocked off until the post-game, and now they have Explosion. So, it took around an hour apiece to capture Regirock, Regice, and Registeel, allowing me to move on to the Weather Trio. Speaking of weather, I headed to the Weather Institute to open up both the Marine and Terra Caves, which actually have you battle Archie and Maxi both in a double battle, but separate from each other. They're very frustrating battles, both of them having multiple legendaries and very powerful Pokemon in and of themselves. So, after eking by them just barely and probably taking an hour on each battle, I'm able to spend around three hours between both Kyogre and Groudon, catching both and leaving just for Quaza, Latios, and Articuno. I went ahead and hatched an additional Sableye with the help of Ditto so that I could just trade it for Articuno, since I still wanted my level 100 one that I caught from both Latios and Rayquaza. Amazingly enough, I thought of this idea since I've already seen Latios in previous trainer battles, I can already go ahead and hunt for it because it's already in my Pokedex, which at least is a slight boost in assistance to me, but what isn't is that running away takes priority. Even though Latios is at level 40, and my Sableye is level 100, I can't use Mean Look and keep it in battle. So I decided to hatch a new Ghastly and level it up to level 40 with rare candies, evolving it into Haunter and using Shadow Sneak to have priority over running, before beginning to hunt for it to capture. After about 10 more encounters and an hour and 15 minutes later, I'm able to finally capture it, leaving just Rayquaza. The Trick House, of course, is still standing in my way, and even at the end of it, there's a double battle against Steven and Wallace! Why can't this game just stop being a pain? Seriously, I'm gonna tell you now, never try this challenge, unless you want to waste a bunch of time on a ROM hack that you can't even transfer the Pokémon from. Once I cleared that after about an hour and a half of trying, Rayquaza's open and ready for battle. It's a hell of a fight, but being able to put it to sleep with Executor and whittle it down relatively quickly gives me a good chance of catching it on every attempt, eventually getting it after around an hour, finishing the game with a complete Pokedex of 386 Pokemon, and a time of 170 hours and 44 minutes. That's only in-game time though, since there's a ton of resetting that I did to attempt the legendaries, but even at 3 times speed, I probably at least spent around 90 hours on this challenge. I can say that now I know the most time it's going to take me to complete a ROM hack Professor Oak challenge, since this one really did have a ton of insane Pokemon to attempt to catch, as well as some insane grinds thanks to some changed level evolutions, but I'm glad that I was able to do the challenge in one of your guys' favorite ROM hacks. Well, at least that's what I think it is, because you guys do definitely view Emerald Kaizo videos like crazy, if Tion and Chizzy, as well as my own Loden Kaizo video, are indicators of. Anyway, if could I have done better? Yeah, probably, but since pickup was an ability that was removed from the game, and the crazy thing that you have to do for the legendaries, and getting through several insane bosses, I, I think I did a pretty good job, and I'm quite happy with what I've done. Next time we come back with a Professor Oak's challenge, though, I'll be heading back to the main series, since I still need to finish up that video for Pokemon Crystal. See you guys then.
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so that we can get the non sub viewership percentage down to 60%. And while you're at it, I'd have really appreciated if you hit that like button and turned on notifications so that you'll be shown when these videos are going live and when premieres are going down, since I like to chat with you guys when we watch the run together. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.